right, guys. I'm um, sorry, sorry for the um the uh, interruption that we had. I'm so sorry about that. You know, sometimes the internet and so many things can happen, but um, it's okay. Um, we are still going to have our discussion today, so make sure you tell um those who went away that we are back again online, and please share this on your page. Don't be the only one that is watching this. We have a great woman of God in the house. And God is going to use her to be a blessing to you and I. So um, I will really, really appreciate it if you share this with your with your friends. All right. And if you're not following us also on our page, make sure you're following us on Good News Studios TV. So while I'm waiting for you to... Uh, Share this. Invite others. We are back. The other broadcast was interrupted because we were still trying to connect with our guest. So um, we are here. We are here. Okay. So I'm also sharing on my page. You two share this. 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 Who is there? I see Benjamin. Hey, Benjamin, make sure you share this on your page. I see Charles K. Uh, I'm seeing other, other people online. Um, let me see some comments here. Um, oh, Sister Nanukia, good to see you here. All right. Kindly make sure you share and then invite others to join us. The woman of God is ready and God is going to use her to talk to us today. And I can't wait. To hear what God has for us. Wow, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Yeah, tell them we are back. We are back. All right. Tell them we are back. Whoa, I'm so excited about today. Let's see what we can get here. I'm also trying to share this on my um, other platforms as well. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so let's kick the ball right now. I have in the studio with me, um, she's my mother. Uh, <laughs> God didn't make black men, but since, <laughs> since, um, now we think we have color. My mom is white. Okay. <laughs> she gave it an African king. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, um, let us welcome on the platform with me, Apostle Lisa Elliot. Mommy, how are you? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Minister Randy, for having me. It's so good to be with you. You're welcome, Mommy. How are you doing, though? I'm doing great. We thank God. God we is thank so God. Good. We thank God. Yes, yes. God is good indeed. Um, a lot of people are watching us on our platform, Good News um talk show today by the grace of god you are my guest our guest on good news talk show the platform is set to edify others build and strengthen our faith in christ and i have had opportunity to be around you i mean i've had opportunity to travel with you sit under your ministry uh, i know you but most people that are listening probably don't know you so who is apostle lisa elliot well well i'm uh, up, up just a servant of the most high god and um okay you know, I love people. I love preaching the gospel. I love seeing the miracles that the Lord performs. 
the healings and people coming to Christ. I just uh, just love it. Our ministry is uh, all right. Elliott so Ministries. you. We, we, we still want to know more about our mother, you know, because I don't think this is all that my mom entails. So um, I will be happy if you can go a little bit in details. Um, I know we already know you are a woman of God, servant of God. You love preaching the gospel, but just give us some, uh, a little bit details, you know, about you. Then we can kick off, mommy. Okay, well, um, the Lord called me at an early age. I've seen him do so many things over the years. Been in ministry over 30 years. Traveled to uh, 10 countries. Ghana, West Africa, 20 trips. Lived there a mm. year. And seen God move in miraculous ways. So I love the Ghanaians, and I'm a mama to many. I'm Ghanaian on the inside, and I'm white <laughs> Caucasian on the outside. Awesome, 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 awesome. First of all, we want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. I called you, and you have so many things going on. I said, Mommy, I know you are always running around. <laughs> because this is calling you this is calling you but we thank you for your time being on this talk show with us um today our discussion is about finding your purpose and just like you said the lord called you in your earliest age you've traveled to most countries especially ghana so can you begin with us how did you how did everything start how did you find your purpose and I think the question is, a lot of people are going through um, going through life and they want to know what their purpose is. So right. you can begin with the definition of purpose and also how you were able to discover your purpose. Well, one thing um, about your purpose is the thing that you're most passionate about is usually the thing that you're called to do. Okay. I heard a minister say one time also that the thing you despise the most is the thing you're called to correct. So if you mm. despise poverty, you are called to bring and release wealth and finances. And if you despise ignorance, you're called to educate. If you despise mm. or you see uh, whatever whatever it is, that's the thing you're called to correct. Okay. I remember at an early age, um, the Lord really drawing me into people that was poor and needy. And so my heart was longing to help those people when I was very young. So when we first started our ministry, it was in the Appalachia Mountains. And I knew from an early age that there was something on the inside of me that I was supposed to do. And I believe those that are watching, you, you know that there is something that you are called to do. There's something on the inside of you. And that something is the Holy Spirit directing you and guiding you to your mm. purpose for His plan for your life. So I see that um, there's people everywhere I go. And they're always saying, pray that I will know what I was supposed to do. But, you know, the Lord has a plan for each of us. Many are called, but few are chosen. And I really believe that we're all called, Minister Randy, to do something. 
I do believe that when the Bible says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, we're to be a witness. The Word of God also says that those that win souls are wise. So we have to pray that we're soul conscious to those that are lost. I do believe the Great Commission is laid out for all of us. And I believe that we all have a purpose to lead someone, some way, to the Lord. There is, uh, there so, is purpose um, in all of us. So what, what, uh, was there anything that you, you, you were doing before the calling of God came in? Anything I was doing? Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, when, probably sometimes maybe you were a nurse, maybe you were a doctor. Uh, I was a banker. I was a banker. I started in banking when I was very young. And I was a bank manager when the Lord gave me the vision of the ministry. And, you know, Randy, okay, I knew so, there was something more than okay. just the career of the corporate world. And I prayed going to work one day. And if you're watching and you're listening... And you really pray a heart's prayer, a prayer from the heart, and ask the Lord to use you. He will, because that's when he gave me the vision to do a prayer. And I quit my job that day, and that was 21 years ago. And I went into full-time ministry. So okay. this is where people it gets it, um, interesting <laughs> because somebody right now, I know a lot of people get um, confused when it comes to making decisions like that. So we want you to walk us through. Here you are a banker. And then um, how did you hear that, that th this is God telling you? Because I believe you were making pretty good money. I was making six figures. And um, I had just bought our dream home. And, but there was something that was becoming unsettled about me. It was like I was not really content. See, until you really walk in the will of God, you don't have the peace of God. And so okay. when you're out of the will of God, you feel unsettled. So when I began to pray that day, a heart's prayer, I began to ask the Lord. I said, if you will take me and use me while I'm young, I'll do anything. You have to be careful what you pray for. And immediately, I had a vision. And the vision was a building with clothing and food and people. And I felt something just come out of the heavens and drop in my belly. And I knew that the Lord was calling me out of the workplace into the ministry. And I felt the building I had the vision of in four days. We began to gather clothes and food. And the Lord began to favor us and bless us. Favor is given to bring forth whatever God has called you to do. He will favor you to do it. So we started a food pantry. We had over 500 come to Christ the first three months. We began to see God do miracle signs and wonders. Blinded eyes open, deaf ears. And I had always felt and had a knowing since I was a little girl that God that God would heal people. And we've seen him do so much of that. So it was just the obedience of stepping out to what he showed me to do. 
And it's not always easy. You have to really trust God. And, you know, quitting your job is a big thing. But Because I was about to ask you a question. <laughs> yeah, you're, because you're after banker. two weeks, I realized that yeah, the paycheck you're banker, wasn't coming you're making anymore. Free guess. You have your uh, your dream home, and here you you hear you hear this this voice telling you, quit your job and let me use you for something better. That that is where I think uh, uh, that's why I want you to walk us through because. A lot of people get to a point where they don't know how, whether am I, is it my conscience talking to me? Is it my mind talking to me? Or oh, this is God, you know, because you made a statement saying that you were making six figures. All right. You're living the American dream, but there was this, um, uncertainty inside you that you were not settled. You, there was no peace inside. Like you are not content with all that you were, you were making. So Everything the transition had, period. You know, I That is what I want. I want you to walk us through the transition, how you were able to transition some of the challenges, some of the things people told you. We want to hear all of that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I remember when I first quit, I worked out my two week notes and there was a bank that was just coming into the city. And it, they offered me a position, making really good money, even more than what I was making, because they heard I was leaving the bank. And see, I was tested, because the Lord will test you to see what's in your heart. Do you really want to be used? And so one thing I learned quickly, there's always a sacrifice in stepping okay. out and being obedient. But the blessing comes from obedience. Just as it mm. did when the Lord spoke to Abraham. You know, he spoke to Abraham to come out from a, among his family, go to a yes. land he knew not. And then here he was with Lot. And Lot and him come to a place where they knew they needed to go separate ways. And so he asked Lot, you pick the land and I'll take what's left. Because the word Lot uh, means veil. And Lot really couldn't, you know, Abraham had to get away from that so he could see. And okay. then when he separated from Lot, then he began to see, and things become more clear, and the blessing become more real. And so that's how it was with me. I couldn't fully see, because he doesn't always show you the full picture, but when yeah. you're obedient to what he says, when you step out then he'll meet you halfway. And a lot of times, Minister Randy, he's asked me to step out when it was huge. Um, I stepped into a $2 million dollar building and I didn't have $2 million. Dollars. But he was testing my heart to see what was there. <laughs> And when I stepped into it, we received the building for free. So when God speaks to you, you have to trust him. And ministry is like any other kind of relationship. It's all about trust. And it's about communication. Communicating with the Father and taking the time for the Father to communicate back to you. You know, he said, my sheep know my voice. Yeah. So when you know, you know, when you know his voice, you've got to move. Because delayed obedience is disobedience. And each person has a purpose. And some of you know what that is. But you're waiting on God. 
and he's waiting on you. Wow, if you just join us, this is Good News Talk Show with Apostle Lisa Elliott. Um, it's getting interesting. Imagine working six figures, a banker, and all of a sudden you heard a voice from nowhere <laughs> telling you, quit and let me use you for something bigger than this. Now, you started feeling uncertain. You started feeling like I'm not content. Yes, I'm making the money. I have my dream home. But still, I'm not satisfied. And here God is telling you, I want to use you for something better. So now that tells us, that our, does that mean that our career is not our purpose? Well, it can be our purpose. I don't believe he asked everyone to just walk away from their job to do ministry. You have yeah. to know that is his plan for you because it wasn't easy I, I didn't realize that the income from the bank was stopped when I stopped working apparently I didn't take the time to think about it <laughs> I was like wait a minute how does this work and I remember after working in the mission and giving free food and clothing and free furniture. I preached a sermon and they took an offering and they gave me $34 and I cried. <laughs> I was so happy. <laughs> so you don't always, you know, know the full plan that God has for you. But if you step out with the obedience of what he's speaking, he'll always provide. He, he'll give you the provision you need. And All he right. told me Guys, once, if Randy, you are listening to us, we are here with Apostle Lisa. If you have any question regarding what she's teaching and talking about, comment it so that we can ask her and then God will use it also to um, bring clarification why she's talking about how she stepped out of her, her six-figure job because she felt you see it's about the feeling you you are on the inside you need to know that nah god is calling me we are not telling anybody to go and quit your job unless you are feeling uneasy like god is calling you beyond what you're doing and i like what you said from the beginning that um Whatever that a, a, man, a certain man of God said, whatever that frustrates you is what God has called you to solve. So if you see poverty and you don't like it, it is something God wants you to address and correct. So whatever you are passionate about that you, you want to do, you love doing, that is, it could be your purpose. So I still back to the transition moment. I know you are trying to summarize everything, but we I love details because... <laughs> When you give us example, then someone that is listening to us will be like, okay, then I can relate with her story. You are a banker. You are making six figures. You got your home. Everything is all right. And all of a sudden, you started feeling this discontent on the inside. And then from where you start working on your two weeks notes, and you said there was a test when you were about to put in your two weeks note that you have quit. Tell us from there. What happened? Well, there was another bank that was just coming to the city, and they called and made me an offer to come in as one of the officers of the bank. And it was uh, even more money. Um, it was a great opportunity for a career. But I knew that the Lord was tugging my heart and he was speaking to me to do the ministry. So I had to say no. But, but to me, you know, when I stepped in and I began to see all the people saved and healed and fed and clothed, to me that was worth more than all the money or the position that I could have ever been given. Yeah. 
um, you're when you're in the will of God, you have the peace of God, and you have that contentment. You know, Paul even said, I've been abased and abound, but yeah. to be content in all things. And most of the people, when they go to a, when they go through a time where they feel feeling uneasy, and they feel the Holy Spirit drawing them to what God has called, then that's when, if they will step out in obedience, God will lead you and guide you. And, you know, I've heard people say, well, I knew I was supposed to do that. I was supposed to do this. I've not done it. But they're waiting on either a doctrine degree or money. But what pleases God is faith. And, and I remember, Randy, that when the Lord called me, there was um, a lot of children in need. And I said, I want to be able to give bicycles to all the children in the rural areas. And I remember um, thinking, how can I do this? But, you know, as I stepped out and started giving bicycles away, the second year, we were able to buy a 1,000 bicycles. And every wow. year after that, a thousand bicycles. Till we gave over twelve thousand bicycles to children that had never had a bike. And it started with me seeing one need, one little boy that had a bicycle that was very old, was very shaky. And I said, Lord, my heart is for these kids. And He made a way for us to be able to raise $100,000 a year for our Christmas giveaway for 12 years. Wow. And the Lord blessed us with that. God will show you a need. You know, the Bible says also he'll give witty inventions and ideas. Most people that invent mm -hmm. things invent it from a need. There is a need for something. Thomas Edison invented because he knew that there was a need. And the Wright brothers, they wanted to fly. And they knew yeah. this was something that was a need. So they invented it. And so there's ministries that is needed. And God is the great creator. So he will stir up that creativity within you and give you the witty inventions mm -hmm. and the ideas for the ministries and for the nonprofits for you to start and to work in, and he'll give you the grace to do it. Because he gives you grace for wow. everything he calls you to. Yeah. You know, one, one thing I want to say is I've learned over the years of doing ministry, he's only responsible to fund and cover you where he has called you. If you are working outside your calling, he has no responsibility there. If you're working so for deep. someone <laughs> and your employer asks you to do something, he's insuring you to do it and he's paying you to do it. But if yes. you go outside the company, and you work doing something else, it's not his responsibility. So you're not going to get mm. paid, and you're not going to have the coverage. So it's very important that you stay within your gifting. And I've got a good word for you. And this is for you, Randy. Perseverance pays off. Your love for music, your love for worship, it's phenomenal. He has gifted you. He has anointed you and given you grace to do it. And you have been determined to continue 
even when it's not been easy, even when mm -hmm. the vision didn't seem clear. But watch what God has done and what he will do through your perseverance. Because Amen. you trust in him. Yeah. Wow. You have wow. to trust in the God Lord. is not responsible for anywhere he has not called you to work. If you are working outside his purpose for your life, he is not responsible. You don't get any coverage. You don't yeah. get any pro uh, <laughs> provision for that because that is not what he sent you to do. That is so profound. How does a person discover, because I've seen a lot of people that say that, I wish I knew this when I was young. Now, somebody is listening to us right now and they don't know whether this is their purpose or this is not their purpose. So how do they discover their purpose early so that they can pursue it without wasting time? Right, because one thing I would say, being my age, is I wish that I had done more younger. I taught Sunday school for years when I was young. But mm -hmm. I wish I had studied more to show myself approved when I was very young. Then when he called me into this, I would have been so more prepared. Um, the thing is, is you've got to know that God has called each of you for something. And whatever that something is, is whatever you're most passionate about, you've got to find how to fulfill that, bring that passion about, and what you're passionate about. Do it and figure out how to fund it. <laughs> All right. That is so powerful. That is so powerful. And then okay. you can do what you... So many people work a job and they're working not, not loving what they do. And you yes. spend most of your life, um, you know, working in the workplace. But I've always said, um, your, your, your job is what you're paid for, and your gift is what you're made for. Mm, your job if is what God you're gives paid you for, your gift is what you're made wisdom, for. You can, work in, you can work out of your gift, and God will bless you and provide for you through that. The Bible says your gift will make room for you, and it will. It'll bring you before great men. I'm living proof. And you know, the very thing that I didn't like about myself was that I talk a lot. But that's the very thing that has brought provision is <laughs> my talking. So, oh, God well, made each one else. of you just exactly the way he wanted to make you to do what he's called you to do. You're the right half. Your voice is the right uh, way. Everything about you. Your personality was created for what you're called to do. Yeah. If you just join us, this is Good News Talk Show, and we are having a discussion with Apostle Lisa Elliott. And she's been telling us a lot about how God called her making six figures. She was a banker. And now she had to step into the unknown. And you can tell, she said, it wasn't easy. So maybe you are listening, and you are like, mm, I can relate with this. Um, I see a comment that says that true. The will of God gives you purpose. Hey, a coffer. They say perseverance pays off. Wait. Yes, mommy, you're giving us a lot of insight right now. So it's about passion. You said something that is related to Mother Teresa when she went to um, India, Calcutta, and there was a, 
a area that she always walked to school to go and teach. And she was working on these um, dead bodies and people that were sick, you no know, rotting feet, and they didn't have food to eat. And she said, I, I couldn't take it anymore. So she went to her, Monsignor, the, 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 the head, the head uh, teacher, master, and said, give me my pay. I quit. And then, then man was like, you quit. What are you going to do? He said, I'm going to feed those guys, the poor guys on the road. And the man said, we have over 17 billion people in Calcutta. And one major thing, you can feed all of them. She said, I will start with one person. And you made something. And now, Mother Teresa, well, God used him and he addressed United Nations. And here you say you saw one little boy that was riding a bicycle. I mean, I've seen pictures. And, and you are like, ah, God, please. My heart is for these children. So that is where yeah. the passion kicked in. And now God begins to make a way for you to provide for these kids. And then sponsors started coming in. Yeah. Somebody's listening to us right now. They know that God is calling them to do this. Like you said, they are doing something that they are not even happy, but still they are giving their time and energy to do that thing. They don't know how to step out and say, okay, I am trying this. I'm not content with it. And I feel like whenever I do this thing, I feel joy and peace on the inside. But the transition, the transition. I remember one time I was working at a certain place and I heard a voice that if you don't quit, you'll be frustrated. And now I'm looking mm -hmm. at if I quit, how am I going to get gas to put in my car? <laughs> so when I was working, I heard a voice. Go tell that supervisor. You quit. So I walked straight to him. He was a Spanish guy, Jose. So I went to him and I said, Jose. He said, yeah, Randy. I said, never mind. <laughs> I got scared. <laughs> so I went back. <laughs> and, because, and then I, I heard a voice again. Go tell him you quit. Now, all those times, there was this heaviness, depression that was, I wasn't happy. But I was making money, all right. But I was not happy. So I went to him again, and I said, yeah. Jose, he said, can you, what is, what is wrong, Randy? Why do you keep coming to me? I said, uh, never mind. So <laughs> I went back again. Now, the third time. <laughs> Second time. <laughs> the third time, I just went to him, and I said, I quit. I didn't even mention his name. I just told him, I quit. He said, what? Are you talking to me? And then I wanted to, I wanted to retrieve what I said. <laughs> I said, yes, I quit. He said, you quit what? I said, now I quit. I want to go home. Are you sure about this, Randy? I said, yes, I want to go home. He said, okay. Um, let me bring you the documents and fill. Are you, are you sure about this? Now, when I step out of that job and, and then I was like, what have I done? How am I going to get gas? How am I going to get a roof over my head? How am I going to pay my rent? But that step of faith, I remember 9 p.m. And I was, I mean, the, the, the little money that I had, I had already spent it. So now I was living in my car. And a call, 9 p.m., a white man called me and said, are you the young man looking for an apartment? I said, yes. He said, well, let me test you the address. Come and check it. And he gave me two bedrooms. Yes. The fear, that's the part. I know you were scared of the unknown. What if it doesn't work? What if people begin to laugh at me? What if my family think I'm making a stupid decision? Oh, yeah. How? Yeah. How did you do it? People, you know, people would say, how do you, how are you going to make money at this? And I said, we're not. I mean, I didn't think about it. You know, I just knew the Lord was speaking for us to do it. And and let me tell you another story real quick. I remember, I said, Lord, 
how will we pay for the rent of the building? And he spoke to me to get a pickle jar and put Luke 638, given it shall be given, pressed down, second together, and running over to put that on that jar. And he said, everything you need will come through that jar. And I thought it was crazy. But I did it, and I put it on the front table of the ministry. Thousands of dollars came through that jar. People would come to the door and look, walk in, put money in, and leave. And I remember one day, after two years, a man called me, and he said, what do you need? And we had been praying for a building with loading docks. And I said, well, we need volunteers. We need more food, you know, for the hungry. We need a bigger building. And so he told me he had a building. And he told me, he said, I want you to come to where the building is. And he didn't give me the address. He just told me it was beside the Pensacola plant. So I got there. I went in. It was a big warehouse, two semi-trucks, and two big loading docks. And we were feeding a lot of people, so we needed the loading docks. And he gave me his card, and he said, this morning I was praying. And I said, Lord, what do you want me to do with this building? He said, I saw two cars go by with Center of Hope Ministries. And he said, I'm going to let you use this building for 20 years. I'll pay your electric. I'll pay the taxes. I'll pay the water bill. You can do whatever you want to with the building. And if you need the semis, we can, we can help you use those by hauling things. I said, is this the address to the building? And he said, yes, 2612 Pickle Lane. And I said, Pickle Lane, we had taken up money in a pickle jar out of obedience to what God had spoke, which sounded ridiculous. And we were given a $350,000 building on Pickle Lane. Wow. So whatever God speaks to you to do, you just do it. And I heard the Lord say, it's all in obedience. And that week, we were also mm. looking in a church building and bought a church. It was amazing what God did, just boom, boom, boom. But it's, it's about being obedient and trusting God. Because I remember one day when the Lord called me to go to Africa. We were leaving for a year, and we were going to live there. Which part of Africa, Mommy? Train under the Archbishop. And I remember crying, and I said, Lord, how can I leave my family? How can I leave the comfort of my home and go to a land I don't even know these people? I, have I not fed the hungry? I was having a pity <laughs> party. Have I not gave out thousands of shoes? Have I not gave out 12,000 bicycles? <laughs> and he spoke to me. And he said, none of that pleased me. I said, <laughs> as they say in Africa, <laughs> what? Yes. And, he said, and I said, what pleases you? And he said, now your faith pleases me. My faith in what I was doing is what pleased him. Wow. I was registering 4,000 kids for Christmas before I ever had a dime to buy 4,000 toys. I was registering the elderly for food baskets before I ever had the food. Yes, he was happy I did what he told me to do, but he was more pleased with my faith in doing it. So he's, well, that's what pleases him. So if faith, my faith pleases him, then I'm going to move by faith. I'm going to live in faith. 
and not fear. Because fear is false expectations appearing real. real. And they're not. This is Good News Talk Show with Apostle Lisa Elliott. <laughs> um, let me read some comments here. Um, I see Dallas Turner. Um, he says, wow, my God, where there is vision, there is provision. Yes, I will do what yes. you see, God. Wow. Hello, Pastor um, Dallas. Oh, Pastor Dallas, how are you? <laughs> so, so God told you to go to Africa. With all that you were doing in America here, God spoke to you and said, now leave your family and go to Africa. And you had never been to Africa. Which part of Africa did you no, go to? We had four locations of ministry. Things were going great. We were the largest distribution center in the city. We were feeding 100,000 a year. We were doing four large distributions a year and weekly mm. food and clothes distribution. And the Lord spoke to me, I'm sending you to Africa. You'll leave on September 13th and you'll be there a year and I'll use you mightily. And I'm so, uh, the out. Lord spoke to you. And did I he tell you any part of Africa you were going to? Oh, I, I looked around and thought, who said that? I was in my yard. I was on my mower. <laughs> I looked around. I thought, then somebody, who is that? And I said, and you know what? We were on that plane on that date that he gave me, that, that date he gave me. And we went to Ghana for a year. You went to Ghana? Yeah. And it wasn't easy. I felt like Abraham. Yeah. <laughs> your, your story is so inspiring. You have no idea. <laughs> so tell us all your experiences. I have a lot of stories. <laughs> following God's purpose for your yeah. life. And now he's taking you out of your comfort zone to do something that is beyond you. Now, I always tell people, if your yeah. vision is not beyond you, it is an ambition. Because an ambition is something you can do for yourself. But God's vision yeah. is what he has to do. It's always beyond you. It's something that it will outlive you. So, here you move from your comfort zone and now to a land that you have no idea. You don't know anybody. God gave you a date. Leave this date. Go to Ghana and I'm going to use you. And he didn't tell you what you were going to do. So what happened when you got to Ghana? Uh, we checked We checked in this little small hotel. And it was called In His Presence Hotel. In Accra. At where? Accra, okay. In Accra. And the bed was on the floor. And we stayed there for <laughs> seven weeks. And I'm praying and I'm seeking the Lord. I said, what have you sent me here for? We didn't know where to go, what we could eat. And we were eating out of our suitcase. And I remember we were down to one cracker. And I said, Lord, we can't do without food. I have fed the multitudes. And I'm hungry. <laughs> and so the Lord began to open up doors. And I remember my driver, when we first met him, he fell down on his knees at the airport. And he said, you're the white woman in my dream. God showed me that you had a key, a sword, and the fire, and you were coming mm. to Ghana to bring a great move of God. And he was weeping. And he's been with us for 14 years now. And wow. he said, 
Mama, I see you preaching for the Archbishop Duncan Williams. And I said, I. <laughs> he took me there and he said, I'll be back. He left me in the car. He went into the church. And you know how big Papa's church is on yes. Phoenix Road. They have 20,000 people come through in one week. Mm -hmm. And so he came back out and he said, come. And we rushed in to Papa's office. And I walk in and I'm looking at all these presidents on the wall. And he's with every one of them. And I said, hey. <laughs> and so then he said, he looked at me and he said, what are you doing here? And I said, God's called me to Ghana. And he said, and he's also called to the nations. And I told him what God had showed me about the great outpouring that's going to take place in Ghana and come over to America. And he took me to lunch. And he said, God, show me the very thing. And so that's where our relationship started. And he trained me for a year and made me a daughter of the house. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It was ama it's been amazing. And I can't wait to see what's, what's ahead. Because I want to reach more people. <sighs> This is Good News Talk Show with Apostle Lisa. And um, man, your story is so inspiring. We have just about 10 minutes to wrap up. So what are some of the things, um, some of the ministries, the name of your ministry, some of the things you do? Because I know you've been talking about God called you out of your banking to start something. So do you have a name of the ministry you do? Yeah, it's Center. It's Center the ministry is Center of Hope International. And then we also have Lisa Elliott Ministries. And okay. um, I do evangelism. I do conferences. I wrote a book called The Business of Ministry that I teach people how to walk in, in the business part of the ministry, the prayer part of the ministry, and the 12 mm. keys that help your ministry flourish. Um, we have done a lot of church planning we have planted and opened up over a hundred churches and food pantries um, and that's worldwide and then you know we did a mission for about 12 years where we gave free food furniture and clothing and now we're training people to do those things all right. Um, let me read some comments here. Somebody says, I, I agree with you. Our faith pleases God. And um, uh, uh, somebody says, you are an inspiration. And someone says, I love your spirit, Apostle Lisa. Oh, my oh, God. I God. remember one time, mommy, I was with you, I think, in Florida. I was with you for a week. And you told me that you guys went on a radio station. And... um. You went on radio station and you were talking about this ministry. And that by the time you were done, God sent people to actually sow seeds, thousands of dollars. C can you tell us yeah, about the first that? Time, the first time I did radio, um, I began to just tell the stories of the Appalachia and the things I'd experienced with work in the mountains when I was a young girl feeding people. And people begin to donate, and I took up um, forty-three thousand dollars in twenty-two hours. I wow. went back two weeks later, and it was another thirty-six thousand. Yeah, and we we ended up doing radio four so, times a year. Now, somebody's listening. I know our time is almost done. Somebody's listening to you right now, and the person's like, "Okay." This woman of God has stirred me up. So I am going to do this thing. 
whenever you want to step out to do what God wants to do to you, especially the people that are close to you, your friends, like human beings, it could be your pastor, it could be somebody, your fa- your husband, your, your friend, your wife, your, your mom, your dad. It's like there's always this opposition. You know, how can that person, what do you have to tell the person that is going through that? I don't want to, I don't want to offend my parents. I don't want to offend my friends. And because of that, it looks like they are aborting the will of God for their lives. What do you have to tell that person that feels like God is calling him or her to step into the unknown and do something beyond what they are doing that they are not content with? And now they feel like if they try to do it, they are going to face persecution from their friends or their family, relatives. What do you have to tell such person right now? Well, you have to make up your mind. Do you want to please your family and your friends or do you want to please God? Um, I remember one day I was very hurt and I was weeping in my closet and I said, Lord, I feel so rejected. And he said, yeah, I know how you feel. I was rejected too. Wow. So the Lord, you know, Jesus experienced a lot here. Um, when he walked the earth, and so he understands. And I have suffered persecution. I've had betrayal. I've had rejection, abandonment. I've went through cancer, heart disease. God's healed me over 30 times of major things. He's brought me out of the bush of Africa when it was when I was very sick. But I'm standing here, hole in my body and happy in my heart to know that I'm in his will. I may not be making everybody happy, but I'm happy. Yeah. Um, wow. I have something I want to share wow. um, as we morning. end this. It's in the quiet time of your personal private suffering that your noblest dreams are born. And God's greatest gifts are given in compensation of what you've been through. So one thing I want to say for seeking God and the purpose and plan for your life is in the quiet time of your personal suffering, your noblest dreams will be born. If you will see God with your whole heart, he will lead you and guide you. And I'm most content when I'm doing what I love the most. And that's helping children and preaching the gospel. I know that because you get, you just get excited when you're around kids like, Oh, Yes, people are like people are like ah it looks like you have a a, a, a young ki- a young girl's heart like you're always happy <laughs> I do God gave me a new heart it's and the doctor said it's like a young girl <laughs> <laughs> all right Omi, thank you so much for your time we appreciate you thank for you, taking Randy, at for least an me. hour out of your time your you ministry a is such a blessing to me we all love you. I love you too. This is Apostle Lisa. If you want to follow her, mommy, give us your social media handle so that people can follow you and then um, we yes. can call it for the day. Center of Hope Ministries and Lisa Elliott. And then my, um, go to all my sites through my website, Lisa Elliott Ministries. Com. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you once again for coming on Good News No Show. I'll call you later, mommy. Oh, my friend. Thank you, Andy. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, guys. That was Apostle Lisa Elliott. And you heard it. I see John D. Person um, online. Hello to you. Um, I believe all of you Akofa, you're like, uh, yes, that's your twin right there. Because I know what, whatever she's talking about goes for you too. So 
I'm glad you came online to watch this and listen to this so you can take origin of stars to the ends of the earth. Listen, anything that you're doing, I remember, I mean, I got to it, I got to a time that I used to cry. I mean, I used to cry. <laughs> yeah. You're working all right. It's not like you're not making money. You're making money, but you're not happy. You know, and whenever you're doing something that is not giving you satisfaction, it's a sign that you're working outside the inventory that God placed on the inside of you. So don't waste more time. So people go all the way and then later they come back into the plan of God. The Bible says many other plans in the man's heart. But it is the Lord's purpose that will stand. So no matter what you have for your life, God's purpose will eventually prevail against your plan. My question is, why do you want to waste all these years, all this time, before you come back to the plan of God? People are going to say no to you. People are going to resist you. You're going to go through challenges, obstacles. It's still part of it, like the woman of God said. In those moments are the times that your greatest dreams are born. That's the time you begin to discover who you are. That's the time you begin to discover something that is way beyond you. The reason people wake up and they're not happy, even though they're making money, is because they haven't found something that they are willing to die for. And that's where the problem is. When I wake up, I get excited because I have a vision to live for. I, I feel like the world is waiting on me. I have something to contribute to my generation. And until you find that, your life is just a routine. You work, you pay bills, and then you die. And you take all the treasure that God placed inside of you and take it back to the cemetery. Don't disappoint God. At the end of your life, you stand before your creator and he is going to ask you, what did you do with what I gave you? Finding your purpose is the reason God created you. I'm not saying go quit your job, but if your job is, does not give you satisfaction and you feel like, yes, I'm making the money or but I'm not happy. I've seen people that have degrees, PhDs, yet they are not happy. They are not excited. They, they don't feel peace on the inside. That is wasted years. Had I known, it's always at last. And you don't want that to happen to you. Eventually, you are going to come back into the purpose of God. But why would you want to waste all these years? That's what the Bible says. Remember your creator now. It's important. Catch it now. That's why Good News Talk Show is, is for you. Here, we create a platform where people use their experiences to talk to you so that you will know that you're not alone. Whatever you're going through, someone has been there before. There is nothing new under the sun. My name is Randy Ajiman. It was a pleasure coming your way. After this, you can subscribe to our Good News Studios TV on YouTube. If you're not following our page, make sure you like the page. It's Good News Studios TV. Admin, comment in the name so that they can follow. And then um, our Instagram is the same name, Good News um, Studios dash, um, TV. Uh, Facebook is the same thing. Follow us there. Hit that bell button so that when we come live, your, your phone will tell you. We have amazing guests for you. We have so many things for you that will help you to become more for your generation. Until we meet again, I'll call you for the day. Stay blessed and ask God to help you discover your purpose. Bye-bye.